Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yoshiman. Last time we did the fourth scenario of the William Wallace Learning Campaign, Research and Technology, and this time we're heading on to the Battle of Sterling. So let's uh, tackle this on, shall we? The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Long Chance is poised across the river forth and threaten the town of Stirling with a force of men-at-arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. Our main objective is defeat the English army and destroy their tower. So that's basically simple. This scenario begins in a similar w way to random map games. So you have three villagers and one scout and a town center. After you play this scenario, you should know all you need to play a random map game. Keep exploring. So if we completed this, we're ready to tackle on random map games. Well, uh, I myself, I'm, I'm quite experienced. I mean, I'm not pro, but I know a little, little bit of this. So let's create some villagers and then um, build some houses. You can also use some hotkeys. Um, my uh, hotkeys are quite different. I actually haven't uh, utilized hotkeys. Also what you can do with the scout, you can do this. Hold shift and then right click and at the last destination just release the shift key. And then you actually set your pathway uh, with your scout. So our enemy is at the west, um, so, so it's uh, also very important to scout, it's actually very crucial. Uh, when I was a newbie I really neglect scouting, it's one of the newbie ex mistakes. Also there's some gold, and there's a hill, that might be useful in some uh, situations. You can also uh, use hotkeys, it depends, so it's a lot more faster to, you know, uh, access uh, villagers and creating. I mean, I find it faster. Same here, you can just press uh, a hotkey. It actually is different um, in a lot of uh, other players because I have a uh, Azerty keyboard and most players have a QWERTY keyboard. It's really weird. Uh, because here in Belgium uh, we have a Azerty keyboard, which is a French key uh, type of keyboard, and for some reason uh, we uh, Flemish people get the French ones, even though we are Dutch. I mean, we are Dutch speaking. I mean, Belgium is weird. Uh, coming from a Belgian guy, no hate uh, for my own country though. But anyway, we're now the Scottish, so let's uh, tackle on the objectives. You have also have a tech tree, uh, it gives you a little bit of overview of what your uh, civilization can do. The cows are an infantry civilization, uh, these are the bonuses. That is um, that's very useful uh, to know what uh, your civilization can do, because uh, some uh, civilizations have some you know, hidden bonuses. So you can look it up uh, if you want to. It's actually different from each civilization, like uh, this one. They have different bonuses and also a different tech tree. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit of an explanation of tech trees. Each uh, civilization has its uh, strengths. Makes the game uh, very interesting. They have roughly the same uh, units, but some units are upgradable and some don't, don't and they have bonuses. Uh, it depends on the civilization you're playing as. Well, I'm also going to build a farm right here. I'm not sure if it's uh, wise. I think it's wise to build it here. Um, so also, uh, it's a very good uh, habit to keep your uh, villagers busy. We can also build a dock here. You can build it on wa uh, near the shore when there's water. And our scout is uh, exploring. Uh, the tower is at the west. Uh, so 
I think we're almost there. Just going to um, get a pathway to uh, form a scout. I'm also going to use. Okay. Yeah, um, we have a wall right here. So we kind of need some soldiers to get through the wall. Uh, these walls are f fairly weak, so it's not a big issue. So we also b have built a dock. So we can use the dock to build a fishing ship that provides us more food, but costs some wood. And yes, uh, we are host. Uh, it's not a really good habit uh, to get host. Try to get a... It's a... It's not a good thing because your uh, villager protection is getting an onto a halt, which is a very bad thing. You, you also make sure that your villagers are uh, keeping themselves busy. You can use this button, or you can actually use a hot uh, use a hotkey for it. I actually have the hotkey on my mouse, on the right side of my mouse, which is very useful. It's easily accessible. I mean, if you have, you have a house with a, you know, I said a house. If you have a mouse with buttons uh, on the side, uh, I think you can utilize it very well to use this as uh, the idle village burden. I've actually, you know, arranged it uh, somewhat. Still need to have uh, more uh, ranged hotkeys. I mean, getting an overhaul. But I'm not going to worry it uh, uh, for right now. You should worry about the English. And yes, I know all the hotkeys, or not actually all the hotkeys, but basically most of the hotkeys. The most, uh, like, you know, uh, mining camps and uh, lumber camps. And don't forget, keep exploring the map. I should actually build a fishing ship just for exploring. Uh, we still don't have enough. But we can also hunt for deer. Uh, I'm gonna show you that off. And yes, uh, some uh, some people will get triggered by you know hunting deer, especially Howie. Mainly Howie. I think he's the only one getting triggered for for killing deer. Okay, our fishing ship is almost built, and we can explore some more with the with the fishing ship. That's also quite a neat way to you know explore. Uh, let's build a mill right here and just hunt for deer. I'm going to keep making villages, but I s always I always forget to build houses. Uh, I'm a bit uh, sidetracked at the moment. So yeah, these are some basics. I don't have a particular build order. Uh, maybe I should look up something on YouTube. On the YouTubes. And yes, I got housed once again. And I'm going to build another house. Um, just in case. We need to collect some uh, uh, 500 uh, food so we can hop on to the next age. Because that's gonna be a good thing because we, we need some uh, well, some power with our units. We can only build militias and militias are quite weak. I mean because gold and their stats aren't really great, and we have to face uh, some advanced units like archers. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go to the feudal age, and I'm actually going to uh, get myself a mining camp, even though we don't have a lot of uh, lumberjack. Ooh, you can actually use the town bell, but. It's actually quite a neat feature, but don't use it too much because you're actually having a virtual loss time by doing that. Because uh, your ec economy is on to an halt. It's not a good thing at all. But they only attack the uh, English. It's very easily. They only uh, attack the town center, that's what I'm trying to say. So we built ourselves a barracks and I think I'm going to create uh, some militias so they are ready for some potential action. Well that's actually a quote from uh, Red Alert 2 which is also an RTS but a different style of uh, playing. I mean it's uh, quite the same but uh, it's 
just different. If that makes sense. Well, uh, I don't know if I'm going to let's play it because I'm bad at the game. At that particular game. Concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least twelve. Remember, Ooh. you can upgrade your militia to men at arms at the depths. Yes, you can make ma men at arms. And also, you know what's a really useful te technology? It's horse crawler. Each age has its uh, own, uh, you know, uh, food upgrade. But there are some. Uh, the last upgrade is um, is actually, you know, exclusive to some uh, civilizations. Well, there are a lot of civilization that's the last upgrade, but the Celts don't have that. But we're not heading to the older ages. Uh, we can only go as far as it's feudal in this uh, scenario. You can also use a wheelbarrow. Uh, it's also a neat technology. And uh, let's upgrade our militia to men at arms. I think uh, that will uh, strengthen up our men. But anyway, um, so the tower must be right here. I can still explore more, so let's do that because my scout is still lying around. I mean, we've explored most of the map, and yeah, these villagers are basically not working. So I'm actually going to build two farms, and I don't know what to do with these villagers. I uh, will we'll send them there, even though it's a long walk. Uh, I'm also going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've explored the whole map, uh, basically. Or not the whole map, but basically more important things. You can also use a transport ship to go there. But I don't see a point. It's just some more villager down time. Well, this is not really optimal play right here. But it's... But I'm mostly having fun. And you also have, like, this technology tracking. It gives your infantry two, plus two line of sight. So, it's, yeah... It's pretty neat uh, to have more line of sight. And um, yeah, it's, I'm glad I listened to the uh, Scottish man because I got myself two sheep. And they kind of have a sheep bonus, uh, the civilization, the Celts. So they are actually very useful in stealing sheep. And we also have Stormwise, so our, our buildings have more uh, line of sight. And you should build some farms there, uh, dude. I'm gonna create a, another house. I'm gonna create some more militia. Ooh, they have some infantry, uh, men at arms. I'm gonna attack it just to debate something. Um, okay, they don't have any work. Uh, you can still cut some trees. Uh, I'm going to upgrade my uh, lumberjack by using uh, by researching the double bit X technology, and this guy also doesn't have any work to do. Well, uh, yeah, we're still busy, and this villager is also going to cut some wood. We also have some mining upgrades. You can do this; uh, gets more, uh, you know, increase uh, the S. I mean, uh, it's kind of an upgrade. Not sure what it actually does. It's like, go okay, it uh, will uh, mine faster. That's what it is. I'm not sure if it, if they carry more or not. But we have researched that nonetheless, and we still need some more lumberjack because our wood uh, pile is getting low. I'm gonna explore some more. Ooh. The enemy doesn't want to attack. Well, for my recollection, they do have some range units. Uh, I'm actually going to build another house here. <laughs> kind of closing in. Well, that might not be a good idea, though. In hindsight, I'm going to abort this. You can abort this by uh, just using the delete button or just clicking on it. You can also delete buildings if it really hinders you, like. Like here, if you really want the doorway, just use the delete button and destroy the house. Well, you kind of waste some uh, resources by doing that. But if you did make a mistake, you can do that. 
You can also build a blacksmith, which is a feudal age uh, building. So let's do that. Also keep creating villagers, but not too many, because the population cap in this scenario is uh, 75. So we have to still make room for some uh, military units. And speaking of military, I'm going to create some more. Can't have enough uh, men at arms. And and some vill more villagers. I think uh, we're doing f fine. We can also build a market. See, you can exchange uh, your resources in the market for gold, or you you can, you can just buy resources too. So it's very neat uh, to you know to utilize your economy. And we s we're still host. Damn it! That's typical Yoshiman thing. Well, I'm going to build some houses. Um, yeah, you can help her. You know what's also going to be useful? A tower right here. They actually suggest that you build a tower here on the hill. So there's actually a thing called a hill bonus. It get, gets you more, uh, you know, resist. Not only resistance, but you get more attack uh, if you uh, if you're on the hill. You you actually do more damage basically, but I'm not uh, too technical with these. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know everything, but it's uh, very uh, useful to use the hill and to your advantage. That's very neat. Um, we can also build an archery range. It kind of looks like a tower, but it's not a tower, so it doesn't fire any arrows whatsoever. And we can also upgrade... Uh, I actually forgot to explain it. What I just did is, uh, you know, forging. It gives our units a uh, plus one attack, you know, melee units. And this is uh, fletching. It gives uh, our archers uh, or like range units one range plus uh, one attack. So let's create some archers. We can create these archers. Um, by pressing the A button is for me. Well, um, it's gonna be a bit different on yours, so I'm not going to explain uh, the um, hotkeys. Because it's uh, actually different. Uh, you can actually set your own hotkeys uh, in the main menu of... Uh, it's actually at the settings menu. So you can basically, you know, mess around with some hotkeys and... You know, arrange it at uh, your de uh, desire. I think I'm going to stop creating villagers. I think we have enough. We also have spearmen. Spearmen are, are these units uh, that cost only food and wood, so they're quite cheap because even though we have a lot of gold, gold is actually quite limited uh, most of the, mostly of the time. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, they told us uh, to attack, but I'm not sure if we want to attack. And uh, look. This is open. Um, do I dare to go right here? Um, gonna create some more villages. I need some more uh, militia, or you know, uh, or uh, military. Uh, cannot uh, think about words. But yeah, about the spearmen. Uh, this uh, this unit is uh, strong against uh, cavalry units, so they get a bonus attack against uh, basically horse units and also elephants as well. They get major bonus uh, with that. They're like, you know, the elephant killers as well as horse killers. Um, I'm going to just create one, even though they're not useful in this scenario whatsoever. It's just for, just for good measure. And we also build a stable, stable right here, so you can basically create squad cavalry, basically all cavalry units. So I'm actually going to create some, even though we're hosts like the Belgian time. That's some very uh, pro prey like right here, Yoshiman. That's MLG Pro being host. You also have skirmishers. Skirmishers have a bonus attack against uh, archers. I don't know if they have bonus attack uh, uh, on their self, but they're actually strong against archers. So let's build them because uh, I believe they have archers. So let's find out. Uh, let's go to this area. Uh, we have uh, opened this, so we can... Oh, they actually use uh, the tower. Chais. Chais. The enemy is murdered. 
Okay, no, okay, we lost our, uh, we lost our, you know, or the Scout Cavalry because I was being a klutz. Um, I think we're ready to attack. Um, I'm gonna build some more and then just attack. We can still keep on uh, producing uh, units. And if the unit production is getting uh, too slow for your liking, well, you can build another uh, military building. I already did that, uh, Scottish man. I'm actually fine. But yeah, our, our army is uh, well round enough. Uh, we have like a diverse uh, type of army. That's actually very nice. So we can actually get on with our attack. So let's attack. I'm actually going to build another uh, military uh, base. Uh, buildings just in case it never hurts I mean it kind of hurts on your uh, wood stockpile so don't go too crazy with it and uh, you can stomp, you know, mine some stone and if you don't have any space uh, in uh, on your population if, if it's getting too cramped well you can delete uh, your villagers so we're actually in, in the skirmish, we can set these uh, skirmishers here and arrange them to attack the archers because they're actually very strong against uh, archers. Well, scouts are also quite strong. Uh, let's attack the archer right here. And we send our military units right here. Yeah, yeah. We're going to explode here just to, you know, shut them up. Also. Take this. And the army is defeated. The army is done. And the tower doesn't attack our units because uh, they have a minimum range. Because they haven't researched that one technology yet, which is in the castle age. And since we cannot go to the uh, castle age, well, we they have a minimum range. Yes. We have done. So yes, we know how to utilize uh, a random map game. It's not really a basic uh, random map game technically, since uh, our opponent doesn't have uh, a tone setter. It will be very uh, much harder. But we have defeated the English nonetheless. So that's very nice indeed. So this is the map. Uh, we have some deer right here. But anyway, uh, also desert area. I mean, it's actually some blank space. It uh, doesn't ma really matter. But anyway, um, let's quit the current game and... Yes. Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a force of Scots led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now, we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal, but Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. Ooh, William Wallace. That's very nice. He's like a brave hero. So, on that note, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this episode. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and do all this good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye!